the stuff that's been going on in the news lately, dealing with drones and, and yeah. Edward Snowden, how long, are we going to see anything related to that real world surveillance in the show? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the nice thing about, for, for us, the nice thing about the world that we set the show in is that it's not so far in the future. We like to say it's five minutes in the future. So the world that we want, we want it to feel like a real world right now. And so we, t we tend to look for things that are really out there. We tend to look for technology that's really out there. We look for, um, we look, I mean, we look for a, a criminal element that our characters could battle that are really out there. Because what we're trying to do all the time is ground the show so you feel like the show could be happening right now. We never want you to feel like it's a show that's taking place in some far off future. We, we always want to feel like it's right now. Because the technology does feel very right now. It's the way that we've conceived it. And there's so many stories now in the news about all of this. So, yeah, of course we're going to be inspired by that and try to take advantage of that. So, for your stories, are your stories more episodic or is there a story arc for the loyal fans to really grab onto? There, there are a number of story arcs that the loyal fans could really grab onto. There's in the pilot we introduce uh, the character of Amelia, who's um, Gabriel's wife. Who there's a mystery with Amelia. Amelia's missing, and we don't know why, and we don't know whether she's really, you know, the, the traitor that she's been portrayed as, or whether there's another uh, there's another explanation for her behavior. There's the character of Mei Chen, who is the one who got the chip, the, the better, stronger, faster chip than uh, Gabriel's. Um, um, so she returns the series as well. Um, and there's also... Um, uh, Mason and Amelia. Those are the two major. Those are the two major storylines. But there's other. There are other things that will be played out. Over the course of oh, Jin Kong, we bring back also. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, we. It's a hybrid. We introduce a bunch of people in the pilot and cast them with actors who we really want to revisit. So okay. Rosalind Chow, who plays uh, Shang Li Wang, who is the, the Chinese spy that Lillian meets with. We just love that actress. We love that character. We want to bring her back. We love William Lee, who played Jim Kong. We just want to bring that character back. So we, we, we're tending to plan things, you know, mostly, very often just for our own amusement, that we just think, like, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could do that? Um, but also, you know, to, so that when people tune in, they they can wrap their arms around something and that we're not going to cheat them. But for people who tune in four episodes in or five episodes in, we're designing it in a way that you will not you will not have had to see the previous four to We'll be able to jump in. That's the idea. Provided that we don't screw it. This series seems similar in a lot of ways to Six Million Dollar Man, but it's you know, I've seen the pilot. So what sets it apart? From Six Million Dollar Man? Well, I mean, Six Million Dollar Man was, uh, was for its time, it was advanced, you know, bionic limbs. And, I mean, it's, it's interesting that just now those bionic limbs we see all the time are, you know, are suddenly real. It took this long for that to happen, but yet it still feels somehow like we should have been there already. You know? and, and, you know, I mean, we say all the time that super strength in today's world is just not as important as, you know, super brain. You know, it's just not. Um, not in a world where somebody presses a button and a drone fires a weapon and, you know, can wipe out a town. Or, um, you know, a ship can fire, fire a missile from 2,000 miles away um, and hit a city. You know, we thought that in our world we wanted to make a character who embodied the thing that we do all the time. The, the device of our time is the smartphone. And it's, it's the one that's in every one of our pockets. It's the one that, that we used to communicate all the time. It used to be, you know, face-to-face -face communication was the most prevalent. Then it was, um, uh, you know, telephone and, then, and, and, and mail all the way, and then email, and now texting. And we're getting closer and closer to just immediate electronic communication all the time. And so it feels like the next stage is we're just going to be connected. Um, and so the similarities with Six Million Dollar Man are augmented humanity. Because that's what that was, augmented humanity. Where we differ is really just in our time. Our time period is different, so the, the show reflects that time. Also, you mentioned that you're 
also the, the, the states that we deal with are going to be pretty big. You know, I mean, they 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 had different you know different types of cases. I can tell you one big difference is we won't feature an episode that outstars Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, and I think sure, it's mean, safe and sane. And that's a way of saying we're trying to make the show as grounded as possible. You know, we really, even though it has this heightened reality, we're we're, we're constantly trying to make it grounded. We're constantly thinking about the human element of it because we feel like the technology you don't have to work too hard to sell, but the human stuff is the stuff that we really have to work, you know, to make sure that it's front and center. It doesn't feel like a show about a robot, but it's a show about a human. If he just downloaded it and then he could do it, then that, that this is a really good example of that feels too robotic. Whereas if he has to, if he reads it and he has to access 